Celebrity Book Club. Who's that knocking at the door? It's all your friends, you filthy whore. Your husband's gone, and we've got books and a bottle of wine to kill. It's Hollywood. It's books. It's gossip. I'm shook. It's memoirs. It's martinis. It's Studio 54. It's It's Celebrity Book Club. Come read it while it's hot. Celebrity Book Club. Tell your secrets, we won't talk. Celebrity Book Club. No boys are allowed. Celebrity Book Club. Club. Buzz me in, I brought the Cuervo. Hey, best friend. Oh, 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 I'm Lily. Oh, 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 I'm Steven. Oh, 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 we're in Dumbo. In the downtown studio, ready to talk about another book that we just read. Read on Monday morning, woke up on the wrong side of the bed. Oh, and I said, do I got a book to read? I did read this book today and then I took a Uber to the studio. Um, okay, and here's what I'm going to say and we can cut this part out if people think it's misogynist but I it's I do think women can drive and I think that women <laughs> are good drivers but I do think sometimes because traditionally in society men are meant to like take pride in their driving and so like men will be a little bit more finessey with the pedals and sometimes women might be a little bit jerkier with their pedal work which can lead to nauseating experiences for the passengers. They're not as like defensive drivers. They're just like not a really put as much effort into like what's happening with the feet. Well, and I'm, I'm talking about straight women when I say this. Yeah. In other cities though, I think women are better drivers than New York. Yeah. Mm, that's true. I mean, New York is kind of a not great driver city. No, it's, it's like it, one of those things where it's like, what are you doing? Like, yeah. everyone is a, everyone's everyone's a fucking of a bad, bad driver. driver. Because it's not really, it's a walking city, one of the few. <laughs> <laughs> As I said before, it's a city for flaneurs. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of flaneurs. <laughs> <laughs> Today we are talking about one of the Upper East Side's... Um, Most notorious <laughs> bon vivants. <laughs> Woman of the town... Businesswoman, restaurant lover, um, sexual being, but also kind of prude. Body positive question mark, charitable icon, philanthropist, Republican, <laughs> star of the Home Shopping Network, and star of a little show called Real Housewives of New, New York, York City. City. We, of course, are talking about none other than Ramona Singer and her book. Life on the, the Ramona, Ramona Coaster. Coaster. <laughs> Genius title. So we have been really just circling the housewives and staying away. Well, yeah. I think that typically on the show we have avoided uh, the more obvious celebrities, celebrities that maybe... Oops, you know, sorry. We're so indie. <laughs> yeah. We're indie. We read books like Ulysses S. Grant and Lauren Conrad. Um, and we don't <laughs> necessarily go for the just like super obvious gate because, you know, let's let's be honest. Okay. There's a lot of of um, housewife coverage, housewife culture out there in the gay and extended gay media universe. The the, the girls in gay space, (laughs) as I call it. And we didn't necessarily want to step on. Add to this huge bucket of housewife content. This absolute trough of housewives content that's out there. You know, and I know some of you out there said, you know, when are you going to do Bethany? Like, when are you going to do Every day I get a message saying, why don't you do Bethany? Truly. And we thought about that. When I say every day I look in the mirror and I see Bethany, I don't know (laughs) if I need to read a book. (laughs) And it's like, right, she's such a part of us. I'll say this, I watch Rooney. And it's one of those things where it's like, I watch Drag Race 2 a lot. Like, I don't necessarily talk about it as part of my public cultural commentary persona. persona because it's just so a part of the gay culture. It's something that, you know, we can all just chat about over tequila soda. Totally at Metropolitan, a bar on Lorimer Street in the heart of Williamsburg. Tuesdays <laughs> has karaoke. <laughs> um, I, too, watch Roni, and I will say it's probably, like, my most watch of the Housewives Same. franchise. It's kind of the only franchise that I have really ever kept up with. Like, I've watched Atlanta, but just really kind of jumped in and out and in and out. And I'm just saying, we're not, again, we are punk. Yeah. We're not here to be, like, girl, like, when she slapped. Yeah. <laughs> Honey, I gagged for my life when Dorinda served tea. Like, that's not our thing. However, we're also not saying that we're That we're above, not shaming that. We're not shaming that. We're not above reality TV. We fucking love reality TV, and we love Real Housewives. Specifically, we love Roni. 
And specifically, I'm pretty sure we both we love both Ramona. We both love Ramona. And I think when I started watching Roni and started in the later seasons, and then I recently I've started yeah. rewatching season one, and I really, because, you know, I think at first I was like, well, of course, Luann is my fave because she's like just the most fucking fab and Bethany is like icon. But first season, I was like, hold up. Ramona is like an unhinged yeah. TJ Maxx liquidator. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I, <laughs> I, was, uh... I didn't realize until I started rewatching the first season that her job is selling excess inventory from to Burlington, to Nordstrom Burlington Rack. <laughs> to Nordstorms, to TJ Maxx, to BJ's. <laughs> and she's buying them from like other random dressmakers that you've never heard of called just like Sun Company that are going out of business. And she's buying all of their like spandex, like figure skating dresses and selling them to like, TJ Maxx. Louisa dresses. Yeah. And she's like looking in like the trade papers to like who's closing. And she's like calling up Louisa. Louisa <laughs> on the phone and being like, listen, I know you have a lot of excess inventory. You're probably going to sell it at a loss. Like, give it to me for $8. She's spending about $75,000 on Louisa dresses. But then and she's then selling turning... it for 100000 to TJ Maxx and she's turning a 25 k profit. Basically, she's a seven-figure <laughs> earner. <laughs> she's a seven-figure liquidator. Because <laughs> in the later seasons, like, Ramona's absolutely not having a job and not talking about her job or any money. It is no, just... it's just like she's just being like, Hamptons and like Avery and Mario and yeah. like I also didn't know that I didn't know about his insane fashion business. So I Mario, didn't know. Yeah, he. Oh, and he. Okay, so so which she describes it in the very first episode is this. It's a Christian jewelry, jewelry line, and she goes, and Mario has a business selling religious articles. <laughs> Just, just articles. And it's a family business because he's Italian, of course, uh, Mario. And you know how some people say, well, Jill Zarin always in the show calls him Mario, which I feel like is very New York. Well, she's very, you know, Long Island. Mario. Right. Mario. Do you say Mario? I mean, you don't hear me say Mario. I know, you know that I, I say Mario. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when, whenever you're saying the name, I guess. I'm a just... non accented, like, Northeastern <laughs> folk. <laughs> you're not just like, oh, I'm headed to Mario's Deli. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I love hearing people say it. I wish that were part of my right, but it's it's my not. Repertoire, but it's um, new. I almost want to jump to one of the last lines of the book where Ramona says, "What ruined our marriage was Pino Grigio and Mario's <laughs> unsuccessful Christian jewelry line." <laughs> no, when she said, "Well," because first she's like, "And then I, and then I think Real Housewives may have ruined my marriage," and she's like, and and then like two sentences later, she, she's just like. But when I really think about it, it was the Pinot Grigio <laughs> that ruined my marriage. And not her drinking Pinot Grigio, but she, her launched, a she launched a line. Grigio line. <laughs> and then a Merlot. So just to back let's, up for a second, go back to go back to her saying religious articles. <laughs> so just to let you guys behind the curtain here, when we do a book, we make a little, uh, we use the notes app on our phone. And I'll just write things as I read the book. The very first thing I wrote here is, does she have a learning disability? Because Ramona has this insane way with language that's like super crazy. And like, there's there's tons of forums and articles about all her Ramona isms that she uses on the show. She's always just inserting like a word in in like a really crazy way. Like I remember she got in this fight with Bethany once, and she was just like, "We're like oil and vinegar," oh, right. <laughs> which is also very. You know, I was about to say you're like, does she have a learning disability? And well, you I think, were diagnosed and with I was, meeting Riddle and as a child. And I, as it, as we, we know now, we've talked about this. I'm a nonverbal learning disability, whatever whatever that means. <laughs> I do think Ramona and I, not to kind of jump ahead to who are you in the book, but I do feel like with language, but I do relate with her. I do think we maybe have a similar like word disease. Yeah. Uh, you have a, a deep creativity. <laughs> with, language, with language. English language. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was watching also this episode in the first season, which is also very like me, where Bethany is giving her business advice and she's having like gals over to try her new skincare line. So Mario Mario's line of jewelry is called like True Faith. True Faith, yeah. <laughs> and it's like cheap <laughs> cross. It's just cross necklaces and the cross earrings. <laughs> yeah, and so then she starts a line of True skincare, but all the Trues are spelled differently. <laughs> <laughs> and Bethany is like, Ramona, look, I know one thing in business, and sorry if I'm being too pushy right now, but you need to have like a cohesive. Word, you can't say true hand cream, and it was like T R U. Right. And then it was like the serum was like 
T-R-U-E. And then the true faith was the jewelry line and they were connected, but not. And she's just kind of ignoring Bethany. No, you can, and it's, just, it's just not computing for her yeah. at all. Bethany also like continually criticizes Ramona for her business being completely fake. So they get in this huge fight as, you know, as fans of the show will know in season eight or nine, where like Ramona's launching this other skincare line called Ageless by Ramona. <laughs> that does not exist. Like you, if you try to find this like on Amazon or anywhere, you cannot buy Ageless. And like sometimes on the show, like they'll be like Ramona will be pretending to use it and it'll just be like a box, that, but you never see like the bottle or the cream like actually come out. She's like, I'm busy using my Ageless by Ramona like on our on our trip and I'm, I love it. And that's why it looks so good. And I, I, Ageless is perfect and it works. And like, I don't know why everyone doesn't love it. So she has this launch and Bethany doesn't come to the Ageless launch. <laughs> <laughs> and like, and, and Ramona goes and things like, Bethany pretends to support women, but she doesn't support women. And then Bethany is just like, I'm sick of the fake businesses. I'm sick of the fake <laughs> products. I won't go. And it's like, I mean, I guess the wine did launch. It sounds like the wine does much better. But she is constantly launching these like faux businesses that like don't really exist. Right. Like, I think there's like two. And again, that's why she breaks down like at so many points in this book is because she's like, I'm running too many businesses. And... At one point, she's running herself so ragged with Grigio and the skincare and her marriage. You're talking about where she lies down on the couch at the store? (laughs) (laughs) She lies and she's like, I started, I wasn't feeling right. And then... She goes to a doctor and she gets diagnosed with a vertigo, vertigo which, which you also I also have. suffer okay, from. Okay, you are Ramona. I am Ramona. <laughs> you have you creative use of the English language and vertigo. I'm also always in Southampton. <laughs> You're always which... in Southampton. You literally are like such a Republican. You love golf. You're like so South Florida. I want to be married to a Mario. <laughs> so this book is basically like... It's mostly just a list of like expensive Italian restaurants on the Upper East Side that and sell like forty two dollar bucatini de Beppo, <laughs> and like every page she's just like, and so then we went to La Parmigiana, and so that we're at La Thai. so we go to Rosa, like one of our favorite, and everything is one of her favorite restaurants. When she discovers again, no spoilers because I mean full spoilers. <laughs> See, there I go, Ramona ing again. Yep, no spoilers, full spoilers. <laughs> That her husband has another woman at their Southampton home, and she barges in, and she goes, and I see the La Parmigiana takeout on the counter, and that's where we would get takeout every time we go to Southampton. And I can't believe that he got takeout (laughs) from our place. It's just like 145. So I passed... La Parmigiana a million times. Uh, one of your many trips to the Hamptons with Mario. <laughs> with Mario. And yeah, I mean, I've never gotten it because it does seem like so. Forty two ninety five, And I feel like when I'm there, like, why not get seafood from Clam Man, which she also mentions in this book as her favorite place. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So wait. she goes to Clam Man um, when her abusive, demented father demands that she buy colossal shrimp for New Year's Eve or so, Christmas Eve. So, yeah. So if you have if you watch the show, you're probably familiar with this. But if not, basically... Ramona has a very similar story to many books that we've read to many women in the entertainment industry where she has a uh, abusive childhood somewhat. And her abusive childhood was basically watching her dad like beat her mom. Beat her mom and be verbally abusive to the rest of the family. And and you know, she does detail a little bit about how he was raised by an abusive mother. Cycle of abuse. Right. But and this was in upstate New York. Yes. Which is why she's so triggered when they go upstate to like Luann's <laughs> yes. like gay panic house that Luann um, buys. I would like to just read a quote, just a few lines that kind of give the way her writing is of a lot of this book in referencing restaurants. Over lunch at Fig and Olive, a chic Mediterranean restaurant on the Upper East Side, I told my close friend Joni... And in turn, the 1.75 million viewers who tuned in to watch that episode, what it was like to grow up in a fractured household. She's always just like, I was telling my friend about my abuse at Alaza on 74th and Madison. (laughs) No, it has this just like a Simpson level of detail where she tells you like the address and the name and the owner of the restaurant every time. And then it's also, I mean, this is very like her aesthetic of wealth, which is just like generic but expensive. And so because she's always referencing an interior in a way. This is in the very beginning. She's talking about like... um, how she had reconciled with her abusive dad. Like, right before he died, he came to Christmas at their house in the Hamptons. I walked past the island countertop and resumed my position at the stove. I stood in front of the Viking free range, carefully stirring the homemade (laughs) pasta and aromatic clam sauce. 
<laughs> so I'm just stirring my aromatic clam sauce on my Viking free <laughs> we range. We will read any book where a woman names the brand of her stove. Oh, just stirring on my Viking. Um, okay, and then here when she's describing how she rose up in the fashion buying business. So she had been like working for like Macy's and then she was, I wanted to get out of the junior market and into Missy, which was adult sizes. So I started working for Flora Kung, a fashion designer who was known for her vibrant silk dresses and free hand prints. I was managing a new division for her and traveling all over the country, opening accounts with upscale department stores like Neiman Marcus, Bergdorf's and Marshall Fields. From there on, I worked for a company called Signe Designs that did private production for stores like the Limited, Express and Taylor and Talbot. <laughs> Just the absolute specificity of this liquidator. Career. Yeah, and then she'll be like, eventually, Mast Holdings, a subsidiary <laughs> of the Limited, came and acquired 80% of Signe Designs. <laughs> and they kind of get pushed out. But then she went into business on her own doing uh, wholesale resale. Well, I will say that with the Bethany books and the Barbara books, like, they all kind of give this, like, generic, like, say, yes, be a bulldog. Yeah. I'll give this to Ramona, my sister with a nonverbal learning disorder, <laughs> is, like, I felt like she was giving more, like, actual business advice. Yeah, no, she, I mean, she is so honest. And she's really honest on the show in a way that none of the other women no. are. And she's literally just saying actually what happened. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> just like Bethany would be too kind of embarrassed to like tell you that she, that like Cigna got purchased for whatever like, at like a 75% discount and then she'd be launched her own for 25K. It's I like, once saw boxes and boxes of skinny girl flavored tea at TJ Maxx. And it's like, it's probably Ramona who bought the not sold skinny yeah. girl tea and sold it to TJ Maxx. Yeah. Okay. Another one of her weird vocab. Um, so she's talking about how she launched when Cigna w went out of business <laughs> and she kind of became like a resale wholesaler on her own. That's how I became a jobber and started my first business, <laughs> RMS Fashions Incorporated. I bought and sold excess inventory and ended up making a lot of money doing it. A jobber? A jobber. Someone who has a job. job. A jobbist. I'm <laughs> jobbing today. Uh, <laughs> so much jobbing on my schedule. Yeah. I need to get jobbing. <laughs> and like they act, they printed that in the book. Like that's not just the shit that comes out of her mouth on the show, which, which is like unedited. Like they were like, I guess we just have to go with jobber. Yeah, I mean, I they they give her free range, Viking range. They they give her full Viking range. I mean, they basically keep this book as m she does like relitigate some of the stuff in the show, and like she talks shit about Alex McCord and right. She'll talk. She it's so funny how she talks so much shit about Alex McCord, and then she'll be like. Yeah, and then actually when he came up to me at, like, this dinner at, like, Oink Boink 3000 or, like, a Soa in Tribeca and said, why don't you like me? And that was a turning point for us. And actually we have a really meaningful friendship. But she goes on in, like, pages and is just like, this is why they suck. Hold on. So when she's first getting cast um, on the show and they're, like, trying to court her, she goes... I had almost forgotten, but a few months back, I had attended a cooking party hosted by my friend Pamela Morgan, who owns a culinary business called Flirting with Flavors. <laughs> Flir she mentions Flirting with Flavors twice. <laughs> she, yeah, no, she, later, she has like a watch party. She was like, I invited my friend Pamela Morgan, who owns owner the of the company Flirting, Flirting with, with Flavors. <laughs> so she kind of shades Jill Zarin in this, which I love. Because basically, yeah. Jill Zarin's also being courted to be on the show before it starts. She's also one of the original cast members. And her and Jill are like tennis buddies in the Hamptons. And Jill doesn't tell her that she's being courted for the show. So she's like, apparently they tried to track me down, but they couldn't find me, even though Jill Zarin, who was also at the party, could have told them how to contact me. So Jill Zarin's basically trying to like get Ramona to not be on the show. Yeah, she doesn't she want wants the competition. To be the star. Which totally makes sense, I think, for how Jill's whole storyline played out and how she had the falling out with Bethany and became so jealous of Bethany when Bethany started becoming like a fabulous businesswoman. And like, you know, because they, they, they never like resume their friendship either. No. And in the beginning, it's like during the True Faith, like skincare party, you know, Ramona makes a dig at Jill and Bethany defends Jill. She's like, Ramona is like, huh, Jill's always trying to like drag you down. And Bethany is like, Ramona, like, stop it. <laughs> She's like, one, get a better name for your moisturizer. <laughs> Two, like Jill is not trying to drag me down. And that she really also is so positive towards Luann. Yeah. She I'm, doesn't say one bad word. She mentions she's like, maybe she hooked up with like Kelly Ben Simone's ex or something like that on our trip to like Saint Tropez. 
She was like, I won't say what happened, but I'll say this. Luann, like, knows her way around a man. Uh, <laughs> the thing about Ramona is, like, for most of this book, she's like, I have my amazing husband, Mario, and my amazing daughter. We also have to talk about how she's so Gilmore Girls with Avery. Yeah. She has this daughter, Avery, single, one daughter. Which, can I just say... Don't have one kid. Don't have one kid. It's yeah. rude to the child. It's insane. I've ne- Like, have you ever met a well-adjusted only child? Silence. No. Yeah. Right? No. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, there's there's something missing there. It's just not right. It's not right. Only child hive come at us, but like look down deep. Like, don't you want a sibling? <laughs> don't you want a sibling? And like- even if you hate them, like that's the thing. If I was to have kids, and I'm still undecided, and I'll just be raw with the audience here. Love that. Yeah. <laughs> Your hinge profile is just a little baby carriage icon, undecided. I would have two. You can't. You just can't have one. You just can't have one. Because here's what happens. Either you become like best friends and like, because like, the mom and with it's the mom. So remote. Like, Avery like... is such a fucking dork. Oh, wait. Actually, I, I'm having a memory to like two days ago. I was talking to someone at a party <laughs> and they knew Avery Singer like from New York vaguely. Because cause she's like so boring and works in like partnerships for Spotify or something, I feel. And she's like very Chicago based. Oh, and it's like a startup queen. <laughs> I think she like literally is like work like reaches out to other just like influencers and be like, hey, this is Avery from Spotify. Like wondering if you wanted to put together a playlist. Like I think that's her job. Okay, I want to do that. <laughs> okay, Listen. I want to be a jobber. Okay, <laughs> jobber for Spotify. And they were just like, yeah, like I don't know. She sucks. She's like kind of spoiled, but like annoying, but like boring. And I just feel like. A lot of single children, or single children, single, uh, only, uh, only children, uh, single children. Uh, uh, when your child is single. single. It's so like, uh, yeah, like me and my mom did this. And then the mom is being too, like when Mario starts cheating, yeah. like the daughter writes a letter to the dad being like, how could you break the trifecta? Like, how could you cheat on mommy? And she keeps on saying mommy and daddy. And she's like in college. And it's like, I'm sorry, when my parents got divorced, I wasn't trying to write letters. And to my dad. <laughs> I also can't believe she printed the entire letter that Avery wrote. Because the letter was not exactly that. It wasn't like a literary genius letter. No, well, Ramona thought it was. So. Yeah, yeah. And that was very like, wow, you really think this is very, it she wasn't was, very well worded. She, she was like, and it's like six pages long. And it's just being like, daddy, daddy like, how could you cheat on mommy? Like, remember when we went to the Met? Like, I thought you loved us. Well, and the whole letter is like this crazy, like her trying to check her dad's priv. Yeah. She was like, daddy, remember when we like went to Africa? Some kids don't have shoes. How could you fuck someone else? <laughs> no. I know, and it's, it's like, like I don't know if these two are connected <laughs> here. That one sounds a bit <laughs> random. I more just and we'll close up on the only children saying that, but then it's like or that happens and then you're like want to get away from your parents but you don't have anyone to like bond with about how like your parents like are yeah, annoying. Yeah, then you're forced to like grow up too fast and you just become this kind of like jaded, especially in New York City. Like you're already you're already be so fucking jaded if you grow up totally. in New York. Totally. You know You've what seen I mean? everything. Hustlers, pushers, hustlers, pushers, <laughs> users, mobsters, <laughs> punks, jobbers. <laughs> You've seen so much jobbing happen by the time you're 12 in New York that you're just like not even impressed by a loft party. And it's just like, you need at least someone to keep you grounded so you're not just this full little just like business owner equestrian like Georgina Bloomberg, who I also went to school with. (laughs) Okay, that wraps up our only child segment. (laughs) Celebrity Book Club. There are like three chapters on the housewives in this book, but I will say like, most of it is about like it's about her marriage to Mario and and Seguin and wholesale liquidation. Mostly about wholesale liquidation and HSN. Wait, okay, this is also <laughs> just quickly. This is goes back to her the way she describes interiors. She's talking about selling on HSN. It's 10 p.m. I'm perched at a high formica countertop. Oh. I feel like I'm sitting at a bar, except there are no cocktails, no glass of Pinot Grigio. Instead, there are cameras all around me. It's just like this intro to being on HSN, being like, I'm at a formica tabletop. <laughs> it's... <laughs> It's like that is like as much anytime she just walks into a room, she's just like noticing countertops. Countertops, ranges. I mean, just like us. 
Okay, so again, more manufacturer stuff. I would get 30-day terms from the manufacturers and with 10-day terms from my buyer. I always had a float of 20 days of money. These are typically unheard of in terms of any business. I actually had the opposite problem for most businesses. I had excess cash in my account at all times. Just like... I mean, go off. I was like, okay, maybe I want to be in this business. A liquidator. Well, I'm always like... I mean, like, I want to open a thrift store. <laughs> I don't think you're not going to get the kind of margins like with liquidation. She's... But I also love TJ Maxx. But that is really more about like calling you the also, Nautica factory. You also need like a huge, you need some seed money up front because like her dad gave her $75,000 yeah. to start her wholesale liquidation business. And because she was like, she had met this other guy who was like, oh, you're going to need money just to like make your first big order. And like, I'll go into business with you. I'll be your partner. And she calls her dad, who she has this historically abusive relationship with. And the dad is like, Ramona, you never need a partner in business. You need to be able to do everything your else self so that you own the whole thing. I'll give you the money. And he did. And then he charged her interest, but she paid him back within 30 days. And, you know, that was, I think, an important lesson for any of us who are struggling to get into business. Be extremely wary about taking on partners. Yes. Because there's a real temptation to it at the beginning to take on a... Unless it's like a creative partner in the business, but taking on a non-creative partner is often someone who's going to take advantage of you. And you probably don't need it, and you can probably figure out how to do it on yourself. So take a note of Ramona's book. Call the abusive father. And yeah, get that money. Get that 75K. Okay, another just example of her insane detail. She's talking about her vow renewal with Mario that happens a couple years she before. She mentions they... the vow renewals so much. Like she's always, it's always be like in the book, she'll be writing about how he's cheating on her, but then she'll kind of go back to another point in time. She's like, so Mario and I were getting ready for our vow renewals. And we're like, bitch, when is this when vow? When is the renewal happening? My newly short blonde hair has been trimmed and blown out by my hairstylist, Oscar Blandy, and I slip into my gorgeous Kimberly Towers wedding dress. It's a stunning strapless gown made of ivory duchess silk satin with a ruched form-fitting bodice and whimsical ostrich feathers and crystals on the bottom skirt. This insane figure skater outfit. That's so wholesale resale. She Kimberly al- Towers. Like, Kimberly, like who these are designers these random that are like, side stores? Like, she's always mentioning designers like we should know who, which, okay, is exactly how I feel about <laughs> it's like... It's very like Giovanni, the infamous Torrento story. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's also how I feel about when I watch Say Yes to the Dress or and she talks about like her wedding dress designer in this. Like, and you're like, who was like Paolo Verdes Giovanna? Like just being like, oh, well, of course I had like the Kimberly Tavana dress and we all <laughs> had to get it. Um, another thing I want to talk about is how this is before Mario and her get really on the rocks and they go to our place where we fell in love, the island of Anguilla. Oh, Anguilla. Yeah. And she's like... <laughs> She's being so okay. This sorry to bring it back to early children. This is another reason to have siblings. She's like Avery had like a school friend also in Anguilla, so it gave us time for me and Mario to make love on our like in our jacuzzi every single day of that vacation. Yeah. So she she got the friend like they invited the friend or whatever, and you guys have to do that. But it's like yeah, if if you just have two kids, you don't always need to be finding a friend to distract your child so that you can fuck. So you can make love. like the kid needs another kid to entertain it because like kids need constant like <laughs> stimulation all the time. I mean, I gotta give it to her. I guess I was like, because Mario was about to be like sixty, and they were like. No, I mean, her whole thing, I mean, ageless by Ramona. She's ageless. She's still fun. She's funky. And on the show, she's always like flirting with guys at the Topping Rose in Southampton. <laughs> okay, so what happens is, so, so this is all sort of common knowledge. In the tabloids, it played out on the show, da 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 but basically Mario, her husband of 22 years, um, does... Her partner. S- her partner starts... Owner of True Faith Jewelry. <laughs> True Faith Jewelry starts cheating on her. And at first, she ignores the signs and she's like he's distant a friend told me like he's taking phone calls and he like takes this call when there's one point where he like she asks him point blank and he's like no that was my friend like alan right and she's just like he said no and i believed him and i was just like honestly like if you think that your partner is cheating on you They they are Like, what I really think that that is just true 100% of the time. She really ignores it. I mean, I think because she had so much true faith in Mario. And she had just done this amazing trip to Africa. 
where she saw leopards' stomachs rise <laughs> and fall with their prey inside. And she's like, oh, I'm in the Zen place for my Africa trip. And she like, don't build a school, quote unquote. God, this is so, I mean, I do feel like this exact thing happened to me last summer when I was like, and I asked my ex-boyfriend, I was on the phone and I was like, I felt like something was different. I felt like something had shifted. And it was like hard to articulate exactly what it was. And I was like, we were supposed to go on this trip together. He wasn't coming. And I was like, what's happening? And and I asked him point blank. And I said, are you seeing someone? And I was, you know, I was like surprised that I was even asking the question because it like felt like it was such like such a wild thing to even be putting out there. But you knew. But obviously there's part of me that knew. And of course he denied. And then, of course, it wasn't until much later that I found out. But it was like, if you have that, because in- your body doesn't just create that inkling, and there's not that kind of shift unless something no, is something really happening. No, something is off. And and then, I mean, I guess maybe that doesn't apply if you're just like so crazy Passionate. and jealous or whatever. No, like, talking about if, if this is more rare, like if you have had this faithful, if you had had Christian a faith- crystal relationship and you feel that husband. something has shifted, it has. And she says that his eyes were different. Yeah. And then he was getting he was getting like so defensive and like angry. And then it's back and forth and back and forth. And then the woman is like trying to extort him. And then it's like super random lies where like I mean, again, her details, she'll be like, so he got off the train at Grand Central Station. And I know that it takes 50 minutes to get from Grand Central Station to the Upper East Side. And it took him an hour. And he said, oh, the train was crowded, so I took a bus. I mean, that's a crazy lie. Crazy lie. If anyone tells you they're taking the bus, no. If they're taking the bus, unless it's me, they're (laughs) cheating on you. But that's also so random Manhattan people. Like, it's so Upper West Side. Like, I feel like I have cleaning clients that are so rich that are like, darling, I got on the M6. Yeah. And they, you're like, They do what? say M6 a lot up there. <laughs> well, you know, and this was before the Q. Yeah, the famous the Q. The famous Q. <laughs> Shout out to the fucking Q extension. Hell yes. Thank you to all of our local elected officials, including Carolyn Maloney and Scott Stringer, for making the 2nd Avenue subway happen and providing access to residents on the east side of of Manhattan. Thank you to the Commissioner of Transportation in New York City. (laughs) Thank you to Albany for making it happen. (laughs) Thank you to all of our MTA staff out there driving those buses. You are the real heroes. Okay, heroes don't wear capes. They wear MTA vests. Um, so anyway, yeah. So basically, and then he was like, "Oh no, I met the girl on the street because her dad was ill." Yeah, again, and it's just like you just went and like fucked her at her house quickly on your way back. Right. It's Ramones. like the, that is the most random sixty-year-old man lie to be like, "I met her on the corner of Forty Second and Lex to talk about her dead dad." I mean, at the same time, no. No, I mean, okay, he's he's a liar and he's just lying. But as Ramona says, she was touring with her Ramona Grigio for five months out of the year. Yeah, she was going to sign it. I mean, <laughs> oh, it's yeah, so this... funny that she's because what the reason that Pinot Grigio killed her marriage is because she's launching this wine and she's going to wine signing. <laughs> she's signing bottles of wine, and that's what ruined her marriage. <laughs> It's such an epic way for a marriage to be ruined, <laughs> to be going to wine. I mean, that will be my downfall. <laughs> signing wine. <laughs> signing we're signing wine. Our, our CBC can martinis. <laughs> yeah. Okay, another amazing part about her wine business is that she's like, I hate like over gaudy wine labels. So I did mine in a classic gold over black, which is just like the cheesiest it's color like, combination. It's the cheesiest color combination. And it's so like, it's like this embossed like serif font that's like <laughs> Pinot Grigio by Ramona. It's so just like expensive Italian restaurant. So Trocatana right. <laughs> and La Parmigiana. thirty two ninety five. like. And I'm not quite sure what she's comparing it to when she's like, I didn't want to do this like cheesy thing. Like is she... Is she talking about kind of more like drawn like nineteen crimes bottle labels? Or Where she... there's like a big photo on it, maybe? Yeah, or she talking about like a faux French, but she also talks about she's like, look, if you go to a huge liquor store in the suburbs, they have stacks of the boxes that the wine comes in. So you need to make sure your cardboard box that the wine is shipped in has amazing packaging. I mean, she's dead right about that. Because she knows she, who's buying. They're she going... knows her customer. They're going. What's the place in the Bottle Hamptons? Hampton, which yeah. is like a huge wine they're, liquor warehouse, and they're getting a full case. Yeah. Of Ramona's Grigio. And like putting it in the SUV. She has a sense, I think, of what other Ramona's 
would be interested in. Rapid fire, amazing line here about Bethany. Bethany was this scrappy, self-made street urchin oh, yeah. <laughs> who were, who was working her way to the top. That is all. Just calling Bethany a street urchin. Well, I, you know, rewatching season one, I was reminded, like, Bethany really has come a long way. And, and she was, like, Bethany's always been insane and, like, had this insane God complex. She was also at cookie sign. Like, she was, like, giving away cookies at an empty Gristides. <laughs> yeah, but so. she was hustling, <laughs> yeah. though. And she was living in, like, a really not glamorous apartment, and, like, on the upper side in this condo. And, <laughs> and from the first episode, she just keeps being just like, one day I want to live downtown. I'm going to live in a loft. I want to live down. You know, I need to be where things are happening. You know, I'm not so into this Upper East Side society culture thing. You know, I'm more downtown. Yeah. I'm fun. I'm crazy. And, like, she has continued to tell herself the narrative, like, that, for, she's, downtown. that she's downtown for the entire show. And she it's always like the one time when she like went to like a Chinese restaurant with Carol and Carol's being so freaked out by dim sum and oh. Bethany just keeps going, we're New Yorkers. This is what we do. We go to dim sum. We're downtown. I live in Lost. I live in Soho. <laughs> She's just like, you know, she really, she has believed that about herself forever. She is downtown. Ramona, Ramona, Ramona. Okay, wait, um, another, okay, wait. So just, yeah. just to quick, quickly back though. So about the end of her marriage. Oh, that's what I wanted to say. Well, is that her and Mario and Avery did spend the pandemic together in Florida. And I did want to ask you, I do feel like they definitely were... Hooking up. Hooking yeah, up. Yeah, I agree. And she was probably like, <laughs> Avery was jobbing at her new Spotify job in like her wing of the house, which gave me and Mario time to make love. He entered me with his big old Italian stallion as I sipped on Pinot Grigio, and then he lifted me onto the granite countertop. I think that... She, their relationship is kind of similar to um, Selena Meyer and her ex on Veep. Mm. It's like he's always, he's good for nothing, then he's always coming back in, and then they're like dating for three weeks again. She's just like, I don't uh. know. I mean, maybe it is working. Right. And she's like in love and they're feeding each other like Parmesan covered strawberries. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, wait. When he is cheating and she's realizing the marriage is falling apart, she gets A, she gets very angry about the mistress getting La Parmigiana takeout. Right. <laughs> She also sees this woman, like, sends her text at one point, like, screen grabs of her text with Mario to, like, prove that she is fucking Mario. And she sees that he has sent her oh, the sunset God. pic that he took. With her. In Naples. Naples Florida. <laughs> yeah, she was like, oh, no, because he. He was thinking about retiring to Naples. So they did, so, like, a research trip yes. to Naples to see if he wanted to retire there. And he was she, being so Italian and tan. And she was kind of like, look, I'm not ready to go to Heaven's Waiting Room. Right. Like, I want to be go, go, go. I'm a New York City New woman. New York City woman. I have five months of Pinot Grigio signings. It's very, um, the line on the show when she's having that birthday party. And she says, I have 60 girlfriends. <laughs> And then she, and like over the course of the episode, like the number keeps like growing and changing. And she's like, I've got 70 girlfriends. I've got 45 girlfriends. Me and a hundred of my girl. And it's just like the girlfriend number is like getting like so maximal. Um, I, but I, my question is, question is, question is, question is this. Do you feel like that is such an invasion to send the sunset pick? Oh my God, absolutely. To send a pick. They were like snuggling at this beautiful Naples resort. And then he took like a probably like out of focus but Blackberry sunset photo. Can I say something? N- hold on. And <laughs> and then sends it to the chick. I mean, it just seems like the most clear betrayal. Yes. But I also think that in our age of phones, we do recycle content. And we all know that we do it. Sometimes I see even, I'll say it, I see even you, my good friend post a photo that you maybe sent to our group chat, you know, with a tweet. And I do the mm. same thing. But, you That's know... That's different. Would you call that a betrayal? Well, on some tiny <laughs> level, okay, yes. it is a betrayal. Oh, so we're down at the red table. We're, at, you... the, we're at the red table. And I'm calling myself I know, just I have much. done that too. When it's that funny to me... Right. Like... And sometimes it doesn't really hit in the group chat or on Twitter. And you're like, what was I doing with this? I honestly think the times I send to the group chat and tweet it... It's when it doesn't hit on both accounts. That's when I do it. But I think it's like so deliriously yeah, funny. Yeah, and you're just cackling away in your high, and I need your the, high top chair at a Formica table. And I need the world to see it. Maybe I've had too much Pinot Grigio. A wine that's super light that can be eaten with food or not. Yes, you can eat Pinot Grigio with food. <laughs> Verbal <laughs> disorder. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, we'll continue discussing. I just, it's it's a problem I think we all face and we all sort of navigate it in different ways. And sometimes I, you know, I try to like 
I might send a selfie to a guy that I'm interested in. And if I do set, decide to send a selfie to another guy or a post or something, I might use a selfie from the same photo session, but not the exact same one. All right, I'm bringing you to the red table. I may send a photo to group chat and then tweet it, but you'll like fully take the joke from group chat and make it into one of your little tweets, which I find even more of a betrayal. Well, unfortunately, I work at Twitter. <laughs> As a jobber, <laughs> yeah, I, I have to be producing content. You have to steal content. I, it's content Fucking that- Carlos Mencia over <laughs> here. Segment Grigio. What does she wear? What, what does she, she eat? eat? How, How does she, she live? live? What does she wear? Um, what does she wear? I mean, yeah, Kimberly Todd Escavanza dresses. All of these just very like stretchy fabric dresses with like some and em- like little em- little figure skater embellishments here and there. She's always like tits out. She yeah, does- she says she has a B cup and she gets implants to keep at a B, which is she does this insane thing when she's talking with her implants, where she was like, "I love to be honest about my implants," and someone asked me if I got implants, and I said no, and you're like. But you but got you them. Ju- but you got them. She was like, so I wasn't ready to tell. But of course, I'm totally honest. And you're like, okay, this isn't Well, she's sense. being honest about the journey about being honest, which took a minute to really be fully forthcoming about the fact that she did get a low C or a high B saline implant. Basically, yeah. her thing was that she wanted them to like be Perky. perkier, just like to stay up where they were. Because she like she goes to the surgeon where like a Victoria's Secret push up bra and she was like, and this is what I want them. I to want look him like. here. Um, you know, and who doesn't love a high tit? I gotta the highest. So yes, yeah, she's she's wearing like I mean she wants to dress in just like this cheesy sexual way, like nineties va va. I mean she's just very nineties. But she's not by any means like a designer like in a fashionista way. No, I think she does love like her whole. Jewelry line is about how it's like priced for the everyday women. Yeah, exactly. And she talks about how she gets so mad and she starts like, because she's too distracted with the marriage and the charities and the grigio, is that the price point on her jewelry goes up and all of a sudden it's being sold for a thousand. And her whole thing is that like she wants it to be sold for like 300. So she is a Maxinista at the end of the day. She's a Maxinista. She invented the Maxinista. Um, I mean, what does she eat? Again, just like insane Upper East Side. Bucatini. Like salmon, I... Bucatini, Florentina, Trevisini salad. <laughs> yeah, and she, I th- she's having dairy like every day. Every day. I mean, that's what I do like about her, that she isn't really being so fat diet I think she's like ever. half and half in her coffee. Yeah, for sure. Um, And I think she's so like salad at the club. Like she's a lot. I mean, all she's the always at Mar-a-Lago are... having this like big grilled <laughs> chicken <laughs> salmon Caesar parm. Cherry tomatoes. Chicken, ch- chicken salmon parm. And like on the show, whenever she's not having grease, she's always telling the bartender. She's just like, I want a glass, fill it to the top with ice. <laughs> And then vodka, and then soda, and it's just like <laughs> oh, her so amazing. much ice. Wait, in her she's drink. the one who made that amazing video of how to make a vodka soda, right? Oh yeah, and you just like pour where ice it's like huge wine glass, tons of ice, vodka, Perrier, lime, and I feel like she at one point had some. I don't know, it was like doing Spawn Con, or she actually like came out with a line of it, but it was like some sort of vodka soda. She also wine calls... wine chiller device because she's always just like I can never have my white wine cold enough. She what always a, wants it like freezing cold. Have did your mom ever? Ha, you ha, your parents have so many like wine icicle devices. Oh, uh, when you yeah, when you open the freezer <laughs> at my house, it looks like a sex toy shop. Like yeah. there's so many like dildo esque objects in there for freezing wine and cups whiskey. of wine and whiskey. <laughs> Those like spears. Yeah, that, like, like these like inserted devices that can either go <laughs> in the bottle or in your glass. <laughs> um. How does she live? I mean, like, she's I mean, mo- it's like preppy. It, Her Hamptons, I feel like, is pretty classic. It's so it's so generic, and so, there's so much gray and white. I mean, I remember when she redid Her Hamptons house, and she's she was so excited by it, and so she invites all the other girls over to the house for the first time, 
and it's literally chunky, chunky couches. It's just like big, like gray, chunky couches, like white, big square carpet, like some huge, like credenza with like mirrors on it. And she and weird, like, fucked up, like things on credenza. The largest white island that like, you've ever seen. Like the tabletop is, it's like it's the size of my apartment. And it's like she's showing the girls around, and like they're all like not that interested in it because it's just like so bland and monochromatic. And and she's like, I did this all myself. And like Sonia or something is just like, well, like you like design it. She was like, I bought I bought it all. I bought it all online. I bought all the furniture online. So basically, <laughs> she like went to Amazon and just like rug a bowl and got these rugs. <laughs> and, and Luann is just like, it's just like she couldn't have put a plant in here anywhere. <laughs> There's not one living thing in the house. <laughs> she also is so that movie thing of like daddy and mommy are going to go get ready and like throw us in their like big carpeted like dressing room. Like yeah. both putting on their like Kimberly Todd tuxes and dresses and she'll be like Mario zipped up my Michael Kors dress and it's just like this carpeted dressing I mean, room. Mm-hmm. And then he's putting a truth faith cross around her and they're looking in the mirror and he's like. You look so beautiful today. Michael Kors really nails it. Yes. It's just Michael Kors up and down. Michael Kors watches, Michael Kors betting. Absolutely Kors betting. So here's what's Trump about her is that Michael Kors sheets. A Michael Kors sheets, but I think that the, it's about the like reflectiveness and shininess of objects is like symbolized like as well. Like a crow. What? Like. Oh, like yes. Crows. A crow is attracted to shiny objects. Yes. It's like how everything in Trump's house or like Mar-a-Lago is like insane gold and marble and like all the shiny stuff. It's like same thing with her Mona. It's like there's so many reflective surfaces and like glass credenzas and then mirrors with like a mirror frame on the mirror. And then like, yeah, just quote like unquote marble, wealth, marble, yeah. marble, heavy things. You're like, if things are big, it means I'm rich. Yeah. If things are shiny, it means I'm rich. Yeah, there's just a lot of shiny and then a lot of grays and whites to go in between. And of course, no plants, but maybe like a fake plant. In no, I yeah, maybe a fake plant. I don't really see her watering anything. No, absolutely I not. I can't imagine her watering. No. And she's very like... Do you think she drinks water? No. Yeah, I don't think so. I think that's also so Trump. I that's think she's so kind Trump of like hate water. I think she's like she is that moment in Baby Mama when Amy Poehler drinks water and spits it out. <laughs> to quote this awesome movie, Baby Mama, cool right fucking now. Fucking reference, yeah. You guys put that on your fucking queue. There's okay. There was. I remember one time she uploaded it's Diet this. Coke and Perrier. She, she's mixing the two. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, she goes when she has like. "Quote unquote water." Oh, she'll have a Perrier, Perrier, yeah. but or she'll be like, "Ugh, I'm DC, so yeah. thirsty." She'll Let me grab a DC. I <laughs> there is this. Um, she had this Insta story like two years ago where she was making fajitas, <laughs> and she kept pronouncing it frajita. So not even vagina, like our just good girl f- Rosie Lazzi. Frajita, and then like <laughs> at three stories later, she just starts saying frita. And she's like putting all these like she's like and here I got my spices and she has this plate she's just like a regular dinner plate that she's put a bunch of spices on that she's like mixing with the spoon she's like I have my salt I have my tacumen <laughs> just, just not even a bowl just a plate yeah and just making up a spice that also called sounds tacumen. like you cooking <laughs> it is a little bit like me cooking you getting a flat plate and you being like garlic powder salt to pepper um. <laughs> Uh, chili flakes, and then you're like mixing with a fork, I'm trying and you're to do like, a mise en place. and you're doing it like really fast, and you're scratching the plate, and it's so clinky, and then you're like throwing chicken on it, and then the so then chicken, see, this chicken is like burning and is like covered in tacumen, and like the oil is like way too high, and then by the end of the video, she's just going, and that's how we make my frittata, <laughs> and it's now it's just a frittata. A frittata. <laughs> It's a chicken frittata. <laughs> Burnt chicken frittata. Okay, who are you in the book? I think we have figured out that I you am Ramona. Ramona with the vertigo. Trump supporting dizzy <laughs> verbal <laughs> disorder. Maxinista. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. You are, you know, yeah, you're honestly like not Ramona to me. I mean, there are definitely parts of you that are like, I think, being like a fun chica and being like, this is a girl's night and being like, I'm going to San Tropez with my girls because I'm ruining, renewing my vows is something you would do. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I will force you to come to my vow renewal in San Tropez. No, but that's the whole thing. It's like the vow renewal isn't there. You're like, we need to do a girl's trip. Oh, a girl's trip before the vow renewal. Yeah. Oh, actually, that's, yeah, that's even more me. Right. Huh. But 
then it's like... Do you think you're Colleen, the HSN commentator who could sell ice in a blizzard? Yes, <laughs> I do. Oh, and then she gifts her like the jade earrings on camera and they sell out immediately. Sell out immediately. She's like, Colleen, I have a gift for you. Give gifts to business partners. It will go a long way. I think that's also really good advice. Yes. Like, I feel like when you gave me that gift from um, Uncommon James, that shirt that says, I'm busy... <laughs> <laughs> when you gave them to me on our Patreon, <laughs> it, if you it's sold out now, uh, yeah, a uh, common, but and that was just a little something to show you we're in this together. together. I'm busy, or am I the hussy that Mario is fucking? She sounded so shady, like almost like too, because she kept like trying to extort money and send screen grabs. I don't think honestly, I, that's I'm actually a, not sending screen you grabs. You are I'm not so, a like, homewrecker, like no. That. And I'm actually, and when I do get involved in drama, I stay above the fray. Yeah, no, you're much more Colleen at HSN. Sometimes you're Ramona, but you're also a Bethany. I mean, I am a Bethany. Oh, of course yeah, I'm Bethany. You're just Bethany. I was You're say, downtown. I, dim sum? <laughs> dim sum? Yeah, I went to NYU. <laughs> I am the most Bethany person. Ever, loft. And I'm always... You haven't been to a loft party? <laughs> Who are you? How long have you lived in New York? I have a business. <laughs> I'm always criticizing people's branding decisions. <laughs> yeah, you are. And everyone's like, truly no one asked. And you're like, what the fuck? Who invited her? <laughs> <laughs> huh. Okay. <sighs> okay. Uh, I give this book... God, huh? It's hard to say because it's no, like, I know. on the one hand, it's like I give Ramona like five out of five bosses of Grigio. <laughs> she's been so invaluable to the New York franchise. Like, A, she's been on the show the entire time. She's never. She hasn't left. She's never left the, from the very first season. And like, she's so committed to like the plot and the bits and like being fun when no one else is. Like, I feel like the entire Housewives franchise, all the cities, like, wouldn't have survived if Ramona hadn't been. So reliable. Dedicated, just as she was to her liquidating business. I give this book But the book three, I yeah, re- is like two and a half for me out of five. I'm giving 3.2. This is an amazing book for an Amtrak ride, a airplane, I think. I want to pick it up covered in sand and half read part about liquidating because I I mean I loved reading about the liquidating. I loved reading about I like the liquidating too. There's just not that much here. But that's what I'm saying. Like it's it's you I pick almost, it up and yeah. it's kind of yummy at some points. The real housewife stuff, you're, you are a little like. So I saw the episode. I don't need this just kind of play by play. Yeah, you're not really. I mean, sometimes you're being like she's well, a that, street urchin. But then I'm also like, if it's gonna be about the housewives, then I maybe would want a sequel to cover the past like five seasons because it kind of stops at around season six or seven. So you want more. Well, I guess I, yeah, I either want more or less of the housewife stuff. I appreciate a random fucking book about like I'd selling lo- dresses to Nordstrom, and that's why yes. I'm giving it my 3.2. Okay, that's fair. But cause see, but reading her, like, you know, talk about Jill Zarin briefly makes me want to hear what she would have to say about Tinsley or Dorinda. Right, so it leaves you wanting more. Ramona, are you listening? <laughs> All right, Real Housewife Hive, bump this. Next week, we are reading a book by legendary actress Pam Greer and her book, Foxy, My Life in Three Acts. Can't wait to dig into that. I love her as an actress and a... PhD um, scholar. And a scholar and a thinker. Uh, thank you so much. This is another amazing you. episode. Stay tuned for the VIP. If you're a subber, if you're not, sign up. Yeah, sign up. Best. Best. <laughs> Welcome to the VIP Lounge Club Kids. Get those martini glasses out and fill them up with Grey Goose, not Kettle, because this is where the expensive ballers come to leverage. Shake, shake, shake. We don't even use vermouth. We're so excited because in the booth this week we have a guest, and not just any guest, Mm-mm. but a hot, sexy, single yep, podcaster, gay man, uh, famous, green point, foodie, curmudgeon, fashionista, <laughs> uh, host of preppy the- Preppy rocker. Yeah, a super hot rocker, really The musical. intersection of prep and rock. Uh, host of the Dial Dan podcast. We, of course, are talking about- Dan, Dan Allegretto. Allegretto. Dan, welcome to the VIP Lounge. Welcome to the VIP Lounge. It's great to be here. Oh. Thank you. Dan, I, we brought you on here today um, 
to discuss Roni. We don't have to talk about we can it. Talk about whatever. No, I just don't want to be labeled as like a Bravo gay because I'm just so not. Let I mean, just, uh, just for the listeners who maybe aren't familiar, I just want to explain myself. I only watch Roni because I think it's incredible television. I've been there from the beginning, and it really is one of the best. I shows literally us in the beginning of our normal episode, we spent five minutes just being like, "We are not Bravo gays, yeah. okay?" Yeah. But it's cool if you are. Yeah, we were being super defensive. <laughs> yeah, and it's like no one asked. So, right, no, yeah, yeah, you, I, when I see you, I say, that's a rural Greenpoint straight man from Elmira. <laughs> I do not say that that's a Bravo, a Bravo gay. gay. No, anyway, I agree with you. Life. And that was just a taste of the VIP lounge. Subscribe on patreon.com slash CBC the pod to get more content like that every single week for only $5 a month. Again, that's patreon.com slash CBC the pod for $5 a month. You get access to the VIP lounge every single week. That's more Stephen and Lily every single week for only $5 a month. VIP subscribe. <laughs> Celebrity Book Club is presented by the Swingin' Prologue Projects. The show is produced by the Swingin' Bird, Meg Renee, with editorial support from Andrew Parsons and Leon Nafok. Original theme song by this cool cat, Stephen Phillips Horst. Artwork by Teddy Blanks at Chips NY. Follow us on Twitter at CBC the Pod Groovy Baby. Subscribe on your favorite podcast app. Leave us a review. And don't forget to tell your friends about us. <laughs> <laughs>